Hello, fragrance specialists! My name is Chance, welcome to my guide, and thank you so much for taking a look at another one of our essential oil breakdowns. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Myrrh, which is a pretty cool oil. I actually do own some of this. This was one of the first oils I'd ever gotten, and it was around $45, $46, and it still is that price, which is super nice, even after all this time after. Great stuff. I, of course, highly recommend using this. I actually got into it because I was doing a lot of running at the time and I found that this really helped deal with the odor and my yeah, no, not super important, but that's ultimately why I got it. I put it in or I, I, I made a foot kind of massage oil out of it. That was that was pretty much it, but enough rambling. In any case, before we dive into the profile here, always consult your doctor before use. Now let's dive in. Its scent is most commonly described as rich, balsamic, warm, and earthy. Its uses are amenorrhea, athlete's foot, bronchitis, trapped skin, dysmeria, gums, halitosis, hemorrhoids, itching, ringworm, and toothaches, which is pretty cool stuff. It's kind of all over the place. Uh, the main uses I got out of it were the athlete's foot and the chapped skin for sure, but I mean, you might be using it for different things. So I don't want you to feel limited at all there. Its most common method extraction is steam distillation and it blends well with cedarwood, cucumber seed, frankincense, lavender, neroli, rose, sandalwood, and lang lang. I think sandalwood in particular goes really well with this oil, but that's just me personally. Under notes, you'll just see dilute before applying. At higher concentrations, it can be an irritant as with anything else, so just make sure you bear that in mind and always practice best practices. Now let's take a quick look at its history here. Myrrh resin has been used throughout history as a perfume, incense, and medicine. Myrrh mixed with wine was common across ancient cultures for general pleasure and as an algalistic, an analgist, I don't know. In pharmacies, myrrh is used as an antiseptic in mouthwashes, gargles, and toothpastes. It is also used in some ligaments and healing salves that may be applied to abrasions and other minor skin ailments. Myrrh has been used as an anaglisk for toothaches and can be used in ligament for bruises, headaches, and sprains. Whew, very cool stuff. Long story short, it's been used a long time for a lot of stuff, um, typically oral hygiene or skin care, so just do bear that in mind as you're playing around with it. Now let's actually look at a different DIY recipe, one we haven't covered. Uh, we're going to be looking at a nail cream. In terms of the ingredients, two tablespoons of shea butter, two tablespoons jojoba oil, one tablespoon linolin, or one teaspoon, sorry, linolin, one half of a teaspoon coconut butter, and 15 drops myrrh. Combine all the ingredients with the exception of the myrrh in a double boiler, heat gently until melted, stir in consistently, remove from heat, stir for a minute and add the myrrh while stirring. Put in a clean container, close when completely cool, label and keep out of light, massage a small amount into nails and cuticles three times a week. A little bit more complicated of a recipe compared to what we've gone over in our previous videos, but still pretty cool nonetheless. Might help broaden your horizons in terms of how you're using this essential oil and maybe a couple others as well. That being said, if you'd like to start experimenting with myrrh or refill the supply you have if you're running low, please do so using Rocky Mountain Oils. Links down beneath in the description. It goes a long way towards supporting the channel. Outside of that, I hope you have a wonderful day. Don't forget to comment any thoughts, questions, comments, concerns, or uses of your own down beneath. And as always, may all of your future endeavors smell divine.